So measures of central tendency. Those are things we've already talked about these a little bit when we did probability. The mean is your average by adding everything up and dividing. Your median is the value that happens right in the middle. And your mode is the one that happens the most. And sometimes you can have data that you have more than one number happening the most. So if you had, for example, two numbers that happen, then that would be called bimodal or multimodal if there was a lot of them. And if everything happens only once, then we would say something has no mode. A lot of times when you're figuring things out, means, medians, and modes, it's helpful to have your data listed numerically from the smallest to the largest. And then once you've got it listed, if we were finding the mode of that data, which one happens the most? And you can probably see that the 12 happens the most. If we wanted to find the mean of that set of data, you'd have to add them all up and divide by how many there are. And if you wanted to find the median, you'd have to find out how many there were. Let's see how many are there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Which is the one right in the middle? Or isn't there one right in the middle? Could you circle one number so there was the same amount of numbers on the other side? No. With an even number, with an even number, 2, 4, 6, 7, this is where the middle would be that cuts the top half and the bottom half. And then your median will be the average of the one before and the one after. Now, they're both 12s. So your median will be 12 in this case. But if one was 11 and the other one was 13, then you would say your median was 12. Or if one was 11 and one was 12, then you would say your median was 11.5. So when there's an even number of data points, you're always going to have to find the average of the middle two. If there's an odd number of data points, there will always be one number that's right in the middle. So you can also do modes with frequency tables. Which value happens the most here? The 50, because it happens 12 times. So remember that the frequency tells how many times something has happened, so we can know that that one happens the most. When you have group data, and in this case, your data is grouped from 70 to 80 is what happens the most. We call that a modal class, because it's that group of data that happens the most. So the second measure of central tendency that we're going to look at is the mean. And that's just your average. We've already done some work with means when we did standard deviation. So you just have to add up all your data points and divide by how many things you have, just like you found an average for anything in the past. So here's the formula on your formula sheet, a reminder of what that symbol means. That's the Greek letter sigma. It's the capital letter sigma. And in mathematics, that means to sum, to add up a bunch of things. So when we have the sum of all of our x values divided by n, and n is the number of things that we're looking at. And we've used the Greek letter mu when we did statistics for a population mean. And x with a bar over top of it is for a sample mean when you're just looking at a smaller sample.
So here we have a table, mathematics marks, obviously, hopefully those are IB marks and not percentages out of 100 on a test. And so there's the range, marks 1 through 7. And they tell you that the average is 4.6. So this is an example of where you couldn't use your statistics functions on your calculator to figure things out because there's no way to put a k into your frequency and then have it calculate backwards. So you do have to know the formula. Well, what does this mean? Our average is 4.6, and if we multiply all of those out, that would be what our total is. And if we're trying to figure out how many scores are there in total, well, we'd add up our frequencies, but there's a K involved here. So we've got a K in the top of our fraction and a K in the bottom of our fraction. And from that, we have to do some calculations to figure things out. So if we add up the whole top, it's going to be 144 plus the 4 times K. And you have the 30 plus K on the bottom. Algebraically, if you want to get rid of that fraction, you multiply both sides by 30 plus K. And then if you wanted to combine your like terms, multiply things through and solve for k. You end up getting that k is equal to 10. Now, given the context of this question, this question has some things built in so that you can go, oh, maybe I made a mistake. If you got a decimal here for k, it should tell you that doesn't make sense. You can't have 8.3 people get a 4. So we knew that we needed to get a whole number. And now that we've got a whole number, can I scroll up? Is it everybody good? Now that we've got a whole number, we know that this value under here is 10. So now what's the mode? What's the most common score? The 4. So your calculator is very nice because it does all of these calculations for you. But if you wanted to do things by hand, you could. So if you've got a frequency table, what's happening? You have a length of 10 happening six times, a length of 15 happening 12, length of 20 happening 13 times, and finally a length of 25 happening four times. Each of our lengths has to get multiplied by our frequency to get a total. Because we have that length of 10 happening six times. So if we put all six of those together, we'd actually have 60. And if we did each of those separately and added them up, we get 600. So what's the important thing here is just to get used to notation. So notation here, we've got the sigma. That's our sum. FIXI, the first frequency times the first value, the second frequency times the second value, the third frequency times the third value. Sometimes what an equation like this will have underneath the sigma is a little scale saying that I starts at 1, and that would be our first frequency and our first score. And in this case, it would go up to 4 because we have four things. And what that sigma needs to do is it needs to run through, start at 1, then do 2, then do 3, then do 4. And we multiply each of those together. And if we added all these up, we would get 600. This symbol here, here we have just the sigma of the frequencies. That's just counting how many there are in total. There's 35 things in total. 
So if we needed to calculate our mean then, it would just be 600 divided by 35. And that would be the formula using the sigma notations. Of course, for a lot of these, you'll just probably do it by hand, adding them up. 10 times 6, 15 times 12, 20 times 13, 25 times 4, and then dividing that by 35. So your calculator would give you these same results if you put your lengths into list one, your frequencies into list two, and you did the one var stat with list one as your scores and list two as your frequencies. And this last note, we've seen this already. Whenever you have a group of data, you always use the midpoint of that group for estimating your mean. Same thing when we made our histograms. All right, one for you to try. can check your values if we came up with the same stuff. Or did I add up things wrong? You mean 195, not 495. Oh, man, I did make a mistake. So that'll change everything. 195, and then 1580. And then this will be 1580. Then our new average will be 79. Mental math. Awesome. So we got 45 students in a class, each recorded the number of whole minutes spent doing experiments on Monday. And so here we have to know what that notation means. That means that they've added up all of their minutes together and they got 2,230. So how do we find the mean? That's just the total number divided by how many students? Approximately 49.6 minutes. So another thing to note here, if you've got a question that has units, in this case, the units are minutes. Include those in your answers. So we've got three important things happening in this little question. We've got our approximation symbol. We've got three sig figs, and we've got units. The, the, when I give you back your quizzes and tests, I usually will write those things on the first page. So you do not want your test to come back and have on the first page 3SF, minus 1, and then the approximation sign, minus 1, and then units, minus 1, because that means that you've forgotten them somewhere in your test or quiz. And then two new students come along, and maybe because it's the end of the day, they got things done quicker, or because they didn't have time, they got things done quicker, but they only spent 37 and 30 minutes. So what is the new mean? Well, you'd have to add the 37 and the 30 on to your previous total of minutes. And now instead of 45 people, you have 47. So our new mean is 48.9. Okay, I'm going to provide you with the data of this so you're not spending too much time calculating. And then I'd like you to try the next couple of questions on your own. So 
So I'll just put this data up here. You could easily calculate each of those things on your own for this question and find the average quite easily. And then you do the math while you're going. 98%. I don't think Fred's going to get it. Poor Fred. Spend so much time just to learn the math just to dash his dream. <laughs> So there's our setup, nine months at 630, three months at 810, and there's our average. We'll look a little bit of, at medians. I don't know if we'll finish this section on medians or not. But this is finding the middle number. So if you want to find the median of a set of data, you're going to need to rewrite things. 9, 9, 11, 11, 11, 11, 15, 16. Did I miss any numbers? Hmm? 23. Okay. That's not so bad because that happens to be fit right at the end. So if we count them up, how many numbers are there? There's nine numbers. The fifth one is going to be the one right in the middle. So that's going to be our median. One thing I do when I rewrite my numbers as a check is I count how many numbers were in the original set and I count how many numbers I wrote. Because if you miss one, especially when finding the median, it's going to be catastrophic. And for part B, again, we can start with the smallest one, 17, 22, 28, 30, 50, 54. Didn't miss any. Now we have an even number, so our median happens right here, and it's going to be the average of the two that are bes on either side. So the average of 28 and 30 would be 29. So you have four numbers, P, Q, R, and S, in that order, and they're all integers. They tell us that the mean of the four numbers is 8, the mode is 7, the median is 7, and the range is 8. What are the four numbers? Okay. Well, we can break down what each of those clues told us, and then slowly from there we're going to be able to figure out some other things. So we've got our four numbers. I'm just going to write them here. P, then Q, then R, then S. First of all, the mean of the four numbers is 8. That means if you added them all up and divided by 4, you would get 8. Since the mode is 7, and there is a mode, we know there are at least two 7s. There might be more, but we know that there's at least two 7s. The median is 7, and if we look at our numbers and say that that has to be 7, what does that tell us? Using the information before, we know that we have at least one, at least two 7s, okay? As soon as we get that that median is 7, what do we know? We know that Q equals 7 and R equals 7. 
because the median is going to be the average of q and r. So it could have been 6 and 8, but then you would have no 7s. And we know we have at least two 7s, so now we know that this number here is a 7, and this number here is a 7. Now the fact that the range is 8, that means going from our lowest one to our largest one, there's a difference of 8. So as far as taking that piece of information, we know that S is equal to P plus 8. Because if we go from our lowest one to our biggest one, there has to be a difference of 8. So going through each thing separately and saying what they meant, that allowed us to figure out that Q and R had to be 7. Does that make sense? Now that we have that, maybe we can use the other information we have to find the rest. So for example, if I know that S is equal to P plus 8, and I know Q and R in 7, can you see that if I can rewrite this, so that it only has the value of P in there. So I'm going to get two p's, 14 and 8 is 22, equals 32. Two p is equal to 10. And so we can figure out p is 5, and s has to be 8 more. So s is equal to 13. All right. We'll end there before the door breaks down.